For the balance of two years, virtually never a serious debate on this floor with senators hearing each other out, listening to each other, considering the pros and cons, addressing each other's amendments. That is a tremendously different Senate from the Senate I first witnessed when I came here as a young man, as an intern for Senator Hatfield in 1976. I came and I was up here in the staff section and I would come down to meet Senator Hatfield on a particular tax reform bill that had a series of amendments and I would brief him on the amendment that was being debated and he'd come in and talk it over with folks and vote and an hour later there would be another vote, an hour later another vote, debate in between, back and forth, enormous respect and courtesy between the members to the principle of the U.S. Senate being a body of deliberation a body of debate. But today, Madam President, that respect is gone. And the most visible sign of the decrease in the mutual accord has been the abuse of the filibuster. In 2010, this last year passed, not a single appropriation bill passed. We have a huge backlog of nominations. Our role of advice and consent has been turned into obstruct and delay in terms of nominations for the executive branch and the judiciary. Now, we have a constitutional responsibility to express our opinion, but this body, by using the filibuster, has prevented this body from advising and consenting, either approving or disapproving these nominations. It certainly is a terrible thing to have our responsibility as a legislature be damaged. But not only have we done that, but we have proceeded to damage the executive branch and the legislative branch. Quite an intrusion on the balance of powers envisioned in our Constitution. Then we have the hundreds of House bills that lie collecting dust on the floor because they can't get to this chamber because of this abuse. All of this needs to change. The first key piece is the talking filibuster. Now, the talking filibuster reform is essentially to make the filibuster what all Americans believe it is. That is, if you believe so strongly that this chamber is in a direction that is misguided, you are willing to come and take this floor and make your case to the American people. Let's take a look at, at our image of that, our, our, and that is, here we are, Jimmy Stewart playing the role of Jefferson Smith, who comes to this chamber where I now stand and says, I will take this floor to oppose the abuses that otherwise might go forward. And he held that floor until he collapsed. And that's what the American people believe the filibuster is all about. You're going to make your case before the American people. I call to my colleagues on both sides of the aisle, my colleagues who have said there should be amendments, my colleagues who said and spoken in favor on both sides of the aisle, in favor of the Jimmy Stewart model of holding this floor and having talking filibusters. Let's do it. Let's use the start of this two-year period to say that something is deeply wrong when we have, in a two-year period, 135 or 138 filibusters eating up all the floor time, preventing modest amendments, preventing modest bills, and putting us on this path to gridlock. The Senate is broken. Let's fix it.